In this video, we're going to show you how to install the spring spacer set on your Jeep Grand Cherokee located in your suspension. Using your 19 millimeter socket, loosen and remove the lug nuts. Once you have the lug nuts removed, grab the wheel, remove it, and set it aside. We're going to loosen and remove our bolt using a 15 millimeter wrench on the bolt side and an 18 millimeter socket on the other. We'll just use our 15 millimeter on an impact. Remove that bolt. Let's go ahead and repeat for the other side. Now at this point here, we wanna go ahead and raise our axle or differential upward. So if your vehicle is on jack stands, you can go ahead and put your jack underneath the axle and we're gonna raise this. In our case here, we're gonna lower this down onto our pole jack and just compress that suspension slightly. We're now gonna go ahead and unbolt the shock on this side. Now we're gonna use a 12 millimeter wrench on the top and 12 millimeter socket on the bottom. We're gonna loosen or remove these bolts. Yours might vary, they might be a 13 or a 14, depending on the shock and the brand. With the shock unbolted, you can go ahead and lower your jack and let that axle droop down. In our case here, we're gonna raise our vehicle off of our pole jack. Now as we lower the vehicle down, you can see the coil spring separate. Go ahead and remove your jack. Now with that in the droop position, you can actually grab this axle and pull it down a bit more letting that suspension flex. Grab that coil spring and wiggle that out. Now on the upper isolator here, there is a divot or a dimple here where what we call the coil spring tail ends. There's actually like a stopper right here. Then it raises back up for the rest of that coil to come around. I'm gonna use a crayon and I'm gonna mark the frame here or the body where that tail is. And then we're gonna work this isolator off. Now here is that recessed portion of what we call the tail section for the coil spring. I'm gonna take our spacer, put that on, and I wanna line this up to that point where that tail lines up with that cryo mark. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but it should be pretty dang close. Now in this instance here, when we wanna drop down that driver's side of the axle so we can fit the coil spring up into it, we're gonna put our jack underneath the passenger side And we're gonna compress this upward and that's gonna force that driver's side down. Now we're using coil spring compressors right here. You have to be careful using these here because they can unwind off of the coil. So be very careful if you are choosing to use something like this here. I'm gonna go ahead and place our insulator here with the tab right here. Let's go ahead and get this into position on the vehicle. Now 
Now at this point here, we have our coil spring in place. We're gonna twist this around just a little bit because we had our tail to line up with the crayon mark right there. I'm gonna go ahead and lower the jack on the other side. That's gonna bring this side of the axle up in a position. We're gonna bring our jack over to the driver's side. We're gonna go ahead and raise up our suspension here. And you can watch a coil spring that's gonna pop onto our insulator there. And once you compress that coil spring, this will start to relieve the pressure off of our tool here. I'm gonna loosen that up. At this point, we can lower our suspension to the point where we can go ahead and squeeze this out. Now when performing this kind of job, you do want to go ahead and take into consideration, you probably want longer shocks for this here, because we just extended our travel on our, on our suspension. I'm gonna raise up our axle until our shock lines up, and then we'll get our bolts installed on that. Install our shock bolts. We'll get the nut started on that and then we'll snug those down. Let's go ahead and tighten these down. Now that our shock is bolted in place here, we're gonna repeat this process for the passenger side, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up by anchoring our sway bar end links. Once we have both sides done, we'll go ahead and connect our sway bar end links. Now at this point here, I'm gonna use my jack to go ahead and raise up that axle. Get our bolt in, install the nut. Before we tighten this, we're gonna repeat for the other side. Now we're just gonna snug these gently. We're just gonna bottom out the, the nut. Do the same for the other side. Let's torque down our two shock nuts here to 21 foot-pounds. I'm gonna torque down your sway bar end link bolts to 78 foot-pounds. Before you do this, you wanna go ahead and compress our suspension to its neutral ride height. What you wanna do is go ahead and install your wheels. Once the vehicle is down on the ground, off of the jack stands and off of the jack, give the car a couple of jounces on the front, get underneath and torque this to 78 foot-pounds. Go ahead and repeat for the other side. On the rear end of the vehicle here, you wanna go ahead and put your jack underneath the rear differential. There's four components we wanna disconnect. We have the sway bar end link on the driver's side here. We wanna disconnect this here as well as the passenger side. And then our driver's side shock, we wanna separate that as well as the passenger side. Let's go ahead and get that going. 
Now we're using a 15 millimeter gear wrench here, an 18 millimeter wrench on the inside. Now we did spray these down with some rust penetrant. Something you wanna go ahead and tackle before you do this job. Just gotta remove the nut on the other side. And we're gonna use our jack underneath our differential here. We wanna go ahead and raise up that suspension. Now I'm just gonna raise it up about an inch or so. Use a 50 millimeter socket to go ahead and remove the bolt. Go ahead and repeat for the passenger side. Now back to our sway bar end link here. Separate that, I'm gonna pull our bolt out on the other side. With our sway bar end links and the shocks disconnected, Slowly lower the jack. Now at this point here with the suspension where it's at, we'll go ahead and install our spring compressors. We want to compress our spring and then remove it from the vehicle. Now with that spring ready to come out, what we're going to do is put our jack underneath the passenger side of the axle And while we lift up the passenger side, it'll tilt out that driver's side, giving us a little bit more room to go ahead and pull that spring out. Now on the upper portion here, there should be a rubber insulator pad there. You can use a small pry tool to get up inside and pry that out. Good, gently work your way around so you can go ahead and release this from the spring tower here. some old undercoating here that's keeping us from pulling our insulator off. So we're just gonna scrape off that old undercoating. Now when I'm pulling this off, you wanna pay attention to the spring perch area. What I'm going to do is take a crayon and mark the insulator as well as I am the body here. So the insulator goes back in in the original position because the top of the spring, the end of the spring is what we call the tail. And we want that to line up in the original position as it was when it was installed. Now at this point here, we went ahead and cleaned up our spring tower right here. We had some rust buildup on there. You wanna make sure that it's cleaned up because you gotta slide your spacer in there. So we're gonna slide that up and over. I'm gonna take our insulator pad, work that up and over. You can see that we have our yellow crayon marked right there. Now what we're gonna do is install our spring I'll go ahead and line that up on the bottom. 
and pull down on that axle. And we're gonna try and work our spring over and in to the vehicle. Now I'm gonna use a large pry bar and I'm gonna go between the axle and the lower control arm and I'm gonna push down. That's gonna give us some downward leverage. I wanna go ahead and push this down and slide our spring into place. And we have our spring in place. Go ahead and rotate this here. There we go. And I remove our pry bar. Now on the passenger side, we're gonna go ahead and remove our jack. Now, next we wanna go ahead and remove the coil spring compressors. Two options. You can put, go ahead and put your jack underneath the rear differential, compress that suspension, and then remove it that, that way there. Or just use your tool, your ratchet or whatever, and go ahead and start to loosen them that way there. Now that we have our driver side spacer installed, let's go ahead and repeat for the passenger side. Let's go ahead and install our bolt for the shock. Now, if you have to, you can use your jack to go ahead and raise up that rear differential to get this to line up a little bit. Now, in some cases, you can use a small or medium sized pry bar to go ahead and maneuver that shock around. Get that bolt started a few threads. Now we can go ahead and bend up our sway bar end link. Get this lined up, push our bolt through. Let's install our nut. Now before we tighten these down, let's go ahead and repeat this process for the other side. Now we'll just snug these bolts down. and torque down the sway bar and link bolt to 40 foot pounds. Torque down our shock bolt to 85 foot pounds. Go ahead and repeat for the other side. Now before we button everything up, you want to go ahead and check underneath the vehicle. When we lowered our axle, our differential vent tube here had popped off. You always want to do a once over, check all of your brake lines check your vent tubes, make sure everything is secured, not leaking, causing any issues. At that point there, we can go ahead and remove our jack from underneath, put our wheels on, and you're all set. Take your wheel, bring it up, set it into place. And we're gonna start all of our lug nuts by hand first. Once we have all the lug nuts on, let's go ahead and snug them down. Torque the lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds.
when only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.